he didn't believe me. He looked at me like I was pathetic. He told me that he would have to report the ethics offense to the scholarship board, that he had no choice. Within a week, I got an official letter. It was so much worse than I'd expected. Ceasing funds immediately, it read. I only have one semester left. One semester of tuition costs almost $33,000. The waitress approaches, fills your empty glass, and tops up mine. She doesn't say anything to me, just forces a closed lip smile. You've been gone a while now. I take another bite of the duck. It's a cold, fatty lump in my mouth. I swallow and can feel it inch down my esophagus into my nodding stomach. I pick up my phone from the tablecloth, check it, just in case, but it's still recording every second, waiting for you to say it, to admit out loud that you stole my essay, that I never gave it to you. It's my only chance. It's been way too long for a trip to the bathroom, unless that's not where you went. You could have slipped by behind me, out the front door. I wouldn't have noticed. My stomach clenches again. I can't afford the bill. I hadn't even thought about that. You'd made such a show about taking me out, about making it up to me. I would have to explain to the waitress. Would they even let me leave? No, no. I'm overreacting. I breathe again. There's no way you could know I'm recording you. You wouldn't even think I'd had the balls. You don't even know what you've cost me. You must still be in the bathroom. Maybe you're sick? I push my chair back, lifting my weight as I do so it doesn't make that awful grating sound. I weave around the other tables. There's a couple there, early 30s. They're both eating French onion soup and staring into their phones, ignoring each other. Little screens glowing blue in contrast to the warm yellow of the candlelight. Another couple, a graying man stuffed into his suit. He's the talker, laughing at his own jokes. The woman is young and beautiful, high cheekbones and a long, thin neck. She smiles, and I see her front teeth are wonky. She's like me. She doesn't belong here. I wonder if he's paying for her. I try to catch her eye acknowledge that we are both outsiders here, but she's focused on her date. The kitchen is open, men in white making flames whoosh, putting on a show as well as cooking our meals. The corridor to the bathroom is behind them. It's mirrored down one side. My reflection glares at me. Cheap secondhand dress, panicked eyes. I straighten up, look away. The lock on the toilet door is red. Occupied. So you are still here. Should I knock? No, no, this isn't happening. Your voice is so quiet, I can only just hear it. I press my ear to the door, close my eyes. No, please, no, this can't be real. This isn't happening, no, please, no, this can't be real. This isn't happening. I turn almost bumps straight into the waitress as she carries two plates into the flapping door of the kitchen. Sorry. I hope you haven't heard my voice. I dart around her, weave back through the tables to ours as quickly as I can. I slot into the chair, take a sip of water, try and steady myself. Do you know? Is that what you were talking about? Have you figured out what I'm trying to do here? That I might end up getting you suspended for good? Expelled? Do you feel betrayed? Something is wrong with you. You're not okay. Something is really wrong. Sorry I took so long. That's fine. I didn't mean to keep you waiting. I can't meet your eyes. It's okay. What have you been doing? Nothing.